Ooh, it's smaller. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County, August 11th, 2022 meeting. As we prepare to open the meeting, here are some of the guidelines. The public meetings are now open to the public. The public hearing is being televised live on St. Mary's County Government TV 95 and the county's YouTube channel. It will remain available for on-demand viewing on the St. Mary's County Governmental YouTube channel. My name is David Willenborg, I'm the chairman. To my right is Richard, member Richard Shin, and then to his right is Tammy Hildebrand, our administrator, and to the far right is uh, our attorney, Chris Beaver. To my left is uh, the vice chairman, Richard Watts, and then member Barbara Hill. In the audience, we have uh, Kevin Hall, our inspector, and Deputy Steve Myers, our alcohol enforcement coordinator. First thing is we're gonna approve the agenda. Has everybody had a chance to review this? Yes. Okay. Actually, I did this backwards. No, that's right. Okay. <laughs> You're good. Okay. So, so I have a motion to approve the agenda as written. I make a motion we approve the agenda as written. And I'll, I'll second that. Okay, we first, second, no discussion on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, this, this next item that we need to change. So um, the meeting minutes. Uh, we need to have the meeting minutes amended because our discussion of the uh, ad hoc committee that we're going to have to review the um, penalty matrix uh, is not in the, in the minutes. So okay. what I like to do is to um, hold off and approve the minutes next month. Okay. We, we actually, I believe, have up to 90 days to approve the minutes, so Okay. Sounds good. Okay, Was very there, good. Were there any other edits needed? Did anybody notice anything else? No? Okay. So do we have a motion to do that? I don't think you need, you you don't need, need, need a motion. Do we all need a motion? Just do it. Okay, do it. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, old business. Extension of conditional approvals. Old Line Pub, Warren McLean, and Michael um, Vendendal requesting a 90-day extension of conditional approval. Are they here today? There we go. They are. How are you doing today? Good, great, how are you? Excellent. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Excellent, uh, please state your name for the record and have a seat. Okay, my name is Warren McLean. And your address? Your address? Uh, 5614 Fasano Drive, Sarasota, Florida, uh, zip code 34238. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Michael Benendahl, 44571 Aspen Lane, California, Maryland, 20619. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey. Go ahead and present your um, your request. So Mr. Benendahl and I applied for and received a conditional uh, liquor license transfer in May. Uh, we have run into unforeseen uh, circumstances in regards to going to settlement with the seller you know, we are 99% there getting all these issues cleared up and, and we're asking for another 90 days uh, just to be safe so we can uh, complete the settlement. Okay. Members, any questions? Can you disclose what those issues are, are that you're having and, and why you're confident that the you're, you're about to close, you, you should close? There was two issues. There was a, um, SBA EIDL loan that the uh, seller was under the impression he'd be able to make monthly payments on as opposed to settling at the table and that um, became an issue that needed to be cleared up. The other issue is I have an attorney from uh, Prince Frederick who is not physically able to attend um, the settlement. So I'm in working with another attorney who is going to complete that, um, that process. Those, those were the two main issues. Okay, pretty straightforward then. Pardon me? It's, it sounds pretty straightforward. It, it, it's just a getting all the pieces of the puzzle where they're supposed to be. So, sure. Yeah. Okay. No, I no further questions. No, no questions. Richard. So I'll make a motion. Sure, go right ahead. Okay, so I'll make a motion to uh, approve 90-day extension, conditional approved for uh, O-Line Pub, 
from Mr. Uh, McLean and uh, Mr. Uh, Van Andal. Okay, we have a motion to approve the 90 day extension. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, so Mr. Chen made the initial motion and uh, um, Barbara's given us the second. Do we have any additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. Congrats. Uh, good luck. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Whenever you guys get it squared away, just come in the office. Okay. All right. And we'll check the boxes. All right. Great. All right. Thank you. Take care. Um, we don't see anybody from Bailey's, and the inspector is calling them to see where they're at. So can we move them? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Corner carry out. Kelly Baddeley and Abid um, Chaudhry requesting 90 day extension of conditional approval. Please come forward and be sworn in. Hi, my name is Abid Chaudhry, 805 Walnut Hill Farm Road, Devonson, Maryland. Okay, thank you. I also need to swear you in. Uh, do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you. You've already stated your, your name and address. Please have a seat. Kelly yeah. Mattingly. I Good have, afternoon. I just oh. I have a letter from Ms. Mattingly uh, giving permission for the attorney and Mr. Abid to speak on her behalf. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Benjamin Carter. I'm here on behalf of Corner Carey. Um, we are requesting an additional 90-day uh, extension uh, from the conditional approval that this board made in May. We are cautiously optimistic that we will actually be able to effectuate the license transfer tomorrow, but we would rather have more time than we need than need less time than we have, or than need more time than we have. Um, the last outstanding item for the effectuation of the transfer is the new use and occupancy permit. Uh, Corner Carry is actually the tenant on the current use and occupancy permit, but it reflects the old property owner still. So the fire marshal is actually at the property right now doing its inspection, and that's the last item for the use and occupancy permit. Um, after that, we'll be going to land use and growth management to get the UNO issued, and um, hopefully we can bring the license by tomorrow and swap it out. Okay. Any questions? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Richard? No. Do we have a motion? Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, approve request for 90-day extension for Bill Lee's catering. I'm a corner carryout uh, for uh, Mr. Ma uh, Kelly Mattingly and Abid uh, Chaudhry. Okay, we have a motion for the, do we have a second? A second. We have a second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Take care. So, what did you get on the Baileys? I, I got a phone call in. They're supposed to let them know and I hopefully be here by the end of the meeting. I think they've forgotten. Okay. <laughs> we'll just move it to the end and as they show up. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to new business. ABC Liquors and Lounge. Application of Gary Mark Rogal, Matthew Robert Rogal, and Nicholas Adam Ford to transfer ABC Liquors and Lounge ABC Liquors Inc. Class D Bear Wine Liquor license from Gary Mark Rogal and Marie Helen Rogal and trade as ABC Liquors and Lounge, ABC Liquors and Lounge LLC, <laughs> 22741 <laughs> Greenotch Road, Unit 5, California, Maryland, 20619, and permission for refillable container permit and outdoor seating. Ms. Wehrman? Yes. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. Gary Rogo, uh, 44815, Shady okay. Hollow Lane, California, Maryland, 20619. Nicholas Ford, 23308, Town Creek Drive, uh, Lexington Park, Maryland, 20653. Matthew Rogo, 23560, FDR Boulevard, California, Maryland, 20619. Thank you, gentlemen. 
Go ahead and what present your. We started an LLC. I'm going to be one of the licensed. Oh, uh, grab your mic, mic Gary. Oh, the Sorry. Mic. Do you want me to repeat that? Yes, yes. please. Okay, uh, we started a new LLC that I'm going to be one of the license holders. Nick Ford's going to be another license holder, and my son Matt will be a nice another uh, license holder. I've been there 25 years. My son's been there 17 years and has been running the ABC for the last five. And uh, Nick has been working there three years part-time and one year full-time. Okay. So nothing's going to change. Everything's basically the same, except the, the change. <clears throat> except Marie wants you to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that, that also. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. <laughs> So, um, refresh my memory, they already had the, we, we know that they already had the extension of premise and the... Um, RCP, the refillable growler. Right, they already had that already, yep. right? Yep. Okay. They're not asking for anything right. different. So all we're doing is a simple ownership change. Mm -hmm. And there are just two conditions. One, we're waiting for the bulk transfer certificate and a trader's license, which I'm guessing, did you get the trade, trader's license yet? Yeah. Okay, so we're waiting on that as well. Bulk That's transfer? Bulk transfer, certificate, and the trader's license. Okay. Richard, do you have any questions? So just clarification on my end. So this is just transfer license or is it also for outdoor? Well, that's included. It's already been approved. That's okay. included. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Yeah, it sounds like it's just a tra just a transfer. They're basically yeah. changing the name into yes. an LLC, uh -huh. yep. transferring to be official. Yep. Right. Yep. Simple. No questions. Barbara. No questions. No questions. Okay. Do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion uh, uh, for uh, make a motion to approve uh, ABC Liquors and Lounge uh, the application uh, of uh, Gary Rago, Matthew Rago, and Nicholas Adam Ford uh, to transfer ABC Liquors and Lounge Class D beer wine liquor license from Gary Rago and Mark Helen Rago Marie, Marie Helen Rago uh, and trade as ABC Liquors and Lounge ABC Liquors and Lounge LLC. 22741 Three Notch Road, uh, Unit 5, California, Maryland, 20619. Uh, that will include the permission for refillable container permit and outdoor seating, which currently exists. This will be conditional upon uh, the bulk transfer uh, uh, and certificate uh, and the, trader's, the, the license. trader's license that needs to occur. Okay. Time frame? Uh, 90 days to get those. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, um, <coughs> Mr. Watts made the initial motion and Mrs. Hill made this second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Appreciate it. Any licensee, applicant for a license or group of not less than 10 persons who are residents or real estate owners in the district in which the licensed place of business is located or proposed to be located may within 30 days from the date of any final decision of the board in approving, suspending, revoking, restricting, or refusing to approve, suspend, revoke, or restrict any license or licensee appeal such decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. The appellant shall be required to pay in advance a sum of money reasonably estimated to cover the expense of transcribing the hearing of the decision being appealed. Next on the list, International Beverage Cadillac Jack, application of Harsh Kumar Patel and Paul um, Chaporis to transfer international beverages, Delhi and Cadillac Jacks P and C Inc. Class D beer wine liquor license from Paul Chaporis and trade as International Beverage Cadillac Jacks um, Sriji Beverage LLC 21367 Great Mills Lexington Park. Oh, it's Great Mills Road, Lexington Park, Maryland 20653. 
Good afternoon, uh, David Weigel on behalf of the applicants. And I cut you off, Mr. Watts, I apologize. <laughs> it's quite okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Do you hereby declare and affirm under penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing Yes, I do. Excellent. Please state your name and address for the record. It's Harsh Kumar Patel, and the address is 8505 Brickyard Road, Potomac, Maryland, 20854. Paul Chaporis, 44841 Valley Lee, Maryland, um, 20692. Okay, thank you. Please have a seat, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Please present your application. Thank you. Um, this is, uh, as stated, a uh, application to transfer the license from Paul Chaporis uh, to uh, Harsh Kumar Patel, uh, who is seated to my left, and Paul Chaporis, who will remain on as resident applicant. He's to my far left. Um, Mr. Chaporis will, uh, has been the license holder, I believe, since 1989. He's staying on the license uh, for a couple of purposes. One, uh, to give Mr. Patel time to move down here and, and also uh, to uh, help ease the transition and, and help uh, use his experience uh, to help Mr. Patel in, in transitioning and, and being the, the licensee. Um, we understand it will need to be a conditional approval. Uh, there's a number of conditions which still uh, need to be met, uh, including the uh, issuance of a bulk transfer permit. So uh, we'd certainly be asking for a conditional approval uh, at this time. Um, I think everything was straightforward and including in the license application or transfer application, excuse me, um, uh, Mr. Patel is a is uh, 26 years old. He's a, he's actually a civil engineer by training. I've I've found him to be a very uh, straightforward and forthright young man, and I, I have every reason to believe he's going to take his uh, responsibilities as a license holder very seriously. So we're happy to answer any questions with regards to the application. So just to be clear, because it wasn't it wasn't clear, I guess in the. Uh, and we're, we're transferring license from Mr. Chaporis to Mr. Chappell. To Mr. Patel and Mr. Chaporis. Mr. Chaporis will remain on as the resident applicant. I, I would imagine at some time at some time he will come off and will file the appropriate application. But as I said, he's, he's staying on for the two reasons I stated. One, to have a, a county resident on the license, and then, and then two, to, to help uh, Mr. Patel in the transition uh, okay. of ownership. So we're not, not necessarily the application is not to transfer from, but to simply add. No, no, sir. No. It's a transfer. It's, it's a transfer. It's a, new, it's a new corporation, so it is a transfer. Okay. It's Mr. Patel on behalf of Shri G Beverages LLC okay. trading. Okay, so we're right. changing. The, yeah. Okay, I see it now. I'm, Mr. Chaporis is, is also going to be an uh, authorized person on that LLC. So his corporate, what it's under now is PNC Corp. Incorporated. Right. That's a different entity. Okay. Yeah. My my apologies. I, no I see that now. It was wasn't. Gotcha. I'm clear. <laughs> so, what we have here is a basically a sale of a business. You're staying on for continuity's sake for a while, and the ownership's being transferred to here. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's what I understand now. So well, it, it's a sale of assets. It's not ownership. Yes. I, I, not to be overly technical, but I want to make sure that's clear. Okay. <laughs> Our transactional guys corrected me on that <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> so I, I understand. Um, I have a question on 9 and 10, these checks. Are these things that you did? Let me take a look. No, that was done by... Um, the applicants came in together to the office. But they should be, but they should be. No, it's a check for yes or no there. Okay, yeah. period. Yep. Okay, yep. very good. I know some Oh sometimes yes, I get messed up that time. Okay. they don't, I yep. know. Okay, um, have you ever run a business before, sir? Yes, sir. What kind of business? Uh, a real estate business. A real estate business. By profession, I am a civil engineer, so I used okay. to have a real estate. Okay. Are you going to be still in the background, I mean, not just as license holder, but helping run the business for a while? Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm holding a mortgage on the property, so I'm invested. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm with Dave. I'd say that's pecuniary interest. Are you going to help me out? You know? Good. And Mr. Patel, you've never actually been in the, in the business of selling alcohol before ever, right? No. Okay. 
Uh, it be a training process for sure, bringing him up to That's speed. That's why he's gonna help me out in each and every okay. situation. But the staff that I've had forever, you met Jeff the other yep. day, they, we're all staying on, you know, just as long as need be and yeah, okay. make sure it, uh, the transition. I don't wanna be embarrassed either. <laughs> and training? Um, uh, Mr. Tapores, I, I don't know if you took RAS training. I haven't had yours, but I've right. had the tips. We all did that just uh, a few months ago. Yep. Yeah. So both of you will be required to take the RAS training. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, we'll give you a call. Yeah. Okay. We'll bring the other guys over and we'll do the one your your class. Yep. It's good. Okay. Any, uh, so the attorney mentioned a couple of yes. other contingencies. So we have RAS, and was there anything uh, else? We have. Um, the bulk transfer needs to be done, and um, we need a trader's license, um, occupancy permit, health department approval, um, and state fire marshal approval. Need everything. He needs everything. Pretty much, and um, there's still we're still working with the comptroller on a tax hold, so. And it was a filing, I believe. I think we got all that straight, but you haven't gotten that message. Yeah, they haven't. Yet. They haven't cleared it out yet. Right. So, yeah. Okay. 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 You do. Want... So, I mean, if we did a 90-day, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a lot of stuff still to get, try to get done. Is do you um, think that's reasonable? They can get that's done in 90 days. That's all you can do. do we just, that's that's all you can do. I know do. it's all we can give them, right? I mean, right, or do so. we just simply say, hey, okay, come back when it's when you're a little closer? Well, you figure works. when they start out. In, in, and I give them a deadline. They're pretty much working within 90 days if, to get here. Sure. Full. So, no yeah. minute like the last minute, right? <laughs> Should be okay. Okay. Sounds good. You want me to do this one? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure. Carry on. I mean. Okay. <laughs> Are you afraid I'm going to trip up on? Oh, it? go ahead. <laughs> no, carry on. You offer a mouthful. It is a mouthful. <laughs> Okay, I'll make the fool of myself. <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to make a motion <laughs> to um, approve a 90-day uh, conditional approval for International Beverage Cadillac Jacks application of Hermarsh Patel, Kumar Patel, and Paul Chaporas to transfer International Beverage Deli and Cadillac Jacks PNC Inc. Class D beer wine liquor license from Paul Shaporis and trade as International Beverage Cadillac Jacks Cherie um, Beverage LLC 21367 Great Mills Road, Lexington Park, Maryland 20653. Conditional on bulk transfer, trader's license, occupancy, health, fire marshal, the clearing the tax hold, and RAS training. Do I have a second? I will second that. I will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Welcome. Good luck, Mr. Patel. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you so much. You, you nailed it, Mr. Chairman, just by Thank the way. Thank you. <laughs> but I didn't get that. <laughs> I wasn't going to say he was backhanded. You know, it was an ins backhanded insult. But <laughs> Practice for three days. <laughs> Everyone have a good day. You it too, was sir. Two historic transfers. Wow. I know. Jack is here now if you want to do that one. Any licensee applicant for a license or group of not less than 10 persons who are residents or real estate owners in the district in which the licensed place of business is located or proposed to be located may within 30 days from the date of any final decision of the board in approving, suspending, revoking, restricting, or refusing to approve, suspend, revoke, or restrict any license or licensee appeal such decision to the circuit court for St. Mary's County. The appellant shall be required to pay in advance a sum of money reasonably estimated to cover the expense of transcribing the hearing of the decision being appealed. Okay, next item. The Creek, application for Arthur C. Brinkley and Cest C. Baird, Celeste, Celeste <laughs> sorry, um, to purchase a Class B restaurant, beer, wine, liquor license, and trade as The Creek. Shuckett's LLC, 20634 Golden Thompson Road, Avenue, Maryland, 20609, and permission for outdoor seating. Please come forward and be sworn in. I don't know. I heard of it, not been 
Seven shuckets. <clears throat> Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Excellent. Please state your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Arthur Charles Brinkley, uh, 6870 Port Tobacco Road, Welcome, Maryland, 20693. Celeste Baird, 20628 Golden Thompson Road, Avenue, Maryland, 20609. Excellent. Please have a seat. longer he sits, the stiffer he gets. <laughs> I can relate to the older I get. <laughs> Go ahead and present your application, please. What's that? Present your application. We are applying for a Class D um, restaurant license, a conditional um, approval, um, 90 days uh, to get through uh, some of the things at the county with health department. Um, and right now we're working on critical area. Where exactly is this located off of Golden Tom's Road? Because I've lived in the 7th all my life and I'm not familiar. Or is it something that changed name? It's the old Thompson Seafood. Okay, okay. I was wondering if that's where it was. Yes. I, was say, I don't know of anything else down there. So. No. Okay. We purchased it in 07. Yeah, it's crazy. It's been a junior. while. It's been a while, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I tried to Google the address, it actually <laughs> came up as the house beside it. <laughs> oh. Not Thompson Seafood. There was one structure that was labeled Thompson Seafood, and then I think it comes up. The little pin comes up to the house behind the yes. restaurant. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it was confusing. Okay, is that your house behind? No, the no. Okay, is that house still standing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? Well, it doesn't come up on that house. It comes up on the house that's out on Golden Thompson Road. Okay. But yes, that old house is still, still there. standing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Okay, questions? So there's not currently a liquor license at all? On the, on no. The not for a long, long there time. There was a long time ago. Are there any contingencies? Yes. Um, like Celeste had said, they, they still need everything for their UNO. So they need the fire marshal approval, health department approval, the UNO, and trader's license. Once they get the UNO, they yes. can get the trader's license. Uh, was, you mentioned something about uh, um, something from Lugum, I guess. Uh, that it would be the UNO. They can't get the UNO. Like she's talking about the critical area. So, right, you know, right. they got to. That's jump. all part of the same. Yeah. Occupancy. Lugum gives the occupancy. final. Correct. Okay. Lugum can't issue until critical area is taken care of. Okay. Whatever. I think the only issue with the critical area is um, planting of some bushes or right, something. Right. Right. Which we have someone that's doing that now, you know, taking care of the paperwork for that right now. Okay. Okay. And. Sorry, let me get back to that. So I have some questions. Okay. Have you ever run a business before? Yes, we do now. He's... Uh, yeah, I own automotive repair. I've had a towing business. I've had a body shop. Um... We still do, we 33 still. years. Yeah. Used cars. But never, never in the alcohol business, right? No. Okay. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your, your setup here and um, how you, what, do you, what do you plan to offer here? There's two buildings on the property. Um, both of them are pretty small. One is a licensed crab picking plant and oyster shucking plant. Um, 
and then the building next to it is what we are proposing to have as the restaurant, which used to be a tavern mm -hmm. way back, way back. Okay. Um, so we would like to have that reopen with the liquor license there and then be able to sell the crabs and oysters and a pretty limited menu, I would say, but um, mostly seafood kind of thing to go along with the business that's there. So let's talk about the, um, the, um, the outdoor seating. Um, this is going to be where on this drawing? I don't have the drawing in front of Hang on. There's a concrete patio. Yeah, the, yes, it. Okay. Concrete patio. Okay, so it's uh, 30 by 15 foot. Yeah. It's Nothing an L-shaped it. patio um, that goes along the front of the building and the side of the building. Okay. So you plan to have seating both on the covered porch and the concrete patio area there, or just? Oh. Well, it looks like that's what makes the L that, that kind of wraps yes, around. Yes, that's it. something I think that has to be worked out as well. So. I don't think that we would have both indoor and outdoor. It would just be, if it was nice, we would move things out to the patio. To the patio, okay. So it wouldn't be extra seating out there. It would be the 17, they're allowing us 17 seats inside. Okay. So if it was nice and we moved them out to the patio, it would just be the same amount of seating. The only entrance and exit to that patio looks to be from from the inside the restaurant. Is that correct? Let's say that again. The only, if I'm looking at a diagram correctly, it looks like the only entrance to that covered patio is from inside the restaurant. Or can you access it to There's the three of them. You There's, have the yeah. two front doors and on the patio right. is an extra door there too and entrance. So you can literally walk from the inside of the building right to the patio without having to go through the front doors. Uh, okay, okay. But I, I guess ultimately what I'm getting at is is it's controlled access, right? It's not... Um, can somebody just walk from their car oh, to the I patio without going through the restaurant, right. correct? Correct. No. Okay. No, okay. No. Thank you. You said that so much more eloquently than I did. <laughs> exactly what I was asking. <laughs> Good. So is the patio on the <coughs> riverside or on the backside? The riverside. The riverside, okay. Mm -hmm. The front where so the, the front park of the building is and the riverside. So the L is in the where the parking is and then to the riverside. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? No. Barbara. No, I, I'm okay. Yeah, no, sir. I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm good. Okay. So, you want to go over the... Um, sure. The, re the requirements, the uh, conditions. We need a trader's license, uh, the UNO, health department approval, and fire marshal approval. Okay. We have somebody want to make a motion? I can make a motion. Okay. I'll, well, Richard oh, said. Richard, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll make a motion. Uh, I guess it will be a, is it a 90 day? Yeah. 90 day um, approval for, uh, for the Creek application of Arthur Brinkley and Celeste Beard, Beard to purchase a class B restaurant, beer, wine, and license, uh, and wine and, Liquor license, um, doing business as a uh, trade as a uh, Creek, Shuckett LLC, uh, with contingency of the UNO Health Department, um, fire marshal's approval, and trader's license. Okay. And permission for outdoor seating. I'm sorry. Oh, and also to grant the outdoor uh, seating areas. For 90 days? For 90 days. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll clarify that one. Um, this is uh, conditional approval on UNO Health Fire Marshal and Traders, 90-day uh, conditional. 
and um, also includes the permission for outdoor seating. Okay. I understand, okay, mm -hmm. we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, Barbara seconds it. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Good luck. Thank, right, you, thank so you so much. Yeah. I ride down, check it out. <laughs> Be a busy man from Welcome to Golden Thompson yes. Road. Well, and our other business in, is in Clinton. Oh. oh, how sweet it is. <laughs> yeah. Wearing you out. We want to come to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am curious though. So this wasn't, this was a, like a store, not a restaurant previously. Shuck House. Shuck House, Shuck House right? The one building is yeah. a Shuck, Shuck House. So I know this is a health department thing, but I'm just curious today. How are you, how are you guys going through health department regarding approval for like a, uh, sept, I mean, uh, grease trap and things like that for a restaurant? They are going to give us, uh, I think, six to eight months of running before they decide what needs to be put in to see okay. what actually how much, is how much waste. We yeah, yeah. So that's going to be a challenge, but just curious because I used to <laughs> run a restaurant a myself. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're up to it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Take care. All Thank right. you. Good luck. Any licensee, applicant for a license or group of not less than 10 persons who are residents or real estate owners in the district in which the license, place of business is located or proposed to be located may within 30 days from the date of any final decision of the board in approving, suspending, revoking, restricting, or refusing to approve, suspend, revoke, or restrict any license or licensee appeal such decision to the circuit court for St. Mary's County. The appellant shall be required to pay in advance a sum of money reasonably estimated to the cover of the expense of transcribing the hearing of the decision being appealed. Okay, we will go back to old business. Do we have um, Bailey's Catering here? We have a meeting, she's on her way though. Okay, so we will. With your permission, we will go ahead and move on to um, the board administrator time. But did you want to get your premise changes? We've premise got a change. few other. We got Helen's Cafe. Oh, you want to do them first? Okay, fine. They would like you to do it first. Okay, premise change. Helen's Cafe. Helen Euler requesting outdoor seating. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the truth, the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir, I do. So please state your name and address for the record. Helen Euler, 24234 Steve Euler Road, Hollywood, Maryland, 20636. Excellent, please have a seat. So I'm back here today to apply for the outside permit. Um, so where we had left off, uh, I just want to kind of give a little recap. Um, Helen's Cafe and Catering has been in business at the Farmer's Market in Charlotte Hall for almost four years now. We celebrate four years opening September 1st. The restaurant has been there uh, nearly 40 years itself. The Farmer's Market has a use and occupancy for the market itself, everything outside my place of business. When the pandemic happened and it was offered to have restaurants have outdoor seating, I didn't have any such thing. It was actually the Amish flower stand right outside my front door. But um, since it wasn't in season at the time, the owner of the property allowed me to have that space, space if I was able to, to do that. So we put a few tables, five total tables out there and fenced it off and we were able to use that thankfully during that time when we were only allowed to serve outside. Um, we, what we are asking for, um, and it's it's been a little bit of a of, of a <laughs> process of getting fire marshal and legum and everything, but I have the letter on file that says that we have been granted permission to continue, and that where the confusion lies is that there is already a use and occupancy for the farmers market itself. I have a, a new lease that includes the separate area that I'm paying extra for and have been even though I haven't had this permit. Um, for just this uh, 30 by 30 square outside the front door um, to seat the five tables. Um, so that 
is all covered there. Um, I have a picture, if you don't have it on file there, that shows that it is surrounded in the green mesh and it is surrounded three ways around, the opening section being right at the sidewalk. So for instance, if I'm at the front door looking out, I have a sidewalk that's approximately eight foot concrete uh, wide and it goes and then it go into this, this marked in area that is the three squared, you know, three surrounded three ways squared with the five tables in front of me. <coughs> there is a pass through where people from the market can go from this side at the other buildings to the buildings on this side for the different trades that are there, um, different um, antiques and such and produce stand. Um, but we do have currently clearly marked yellow paint lines that kind of surround where the pole ends, where the green wrap goes around and kind of connects it to the building. Well, it doesn't kind of, it actually connects from that pole to the brick building, showing that this is our area. You're welcome to pass through. Um, but we want people to know that there's boundaries. Now, we can't say no alcohol beyond this point because we're not serving alcohol at this time, but that was what the intention is for. We also, I would like to clarify, this part of the patio would not be in use unless there's staffing allowed to do so. The only time we really look forward to using this is during dinner time between 5 and 9 p.m. on Friday evening, possibly lunchtime on Saturday or on Sundays during brunch. Um, that's when we get the most requests of people, can we sit outside when the weather is nice? Um, at this time, we are allowed to seat people for food dining, but it's a little confusing to tell them, well, you can sit out there and eat, but you cannot have a beer out there. So we just tell them at this time, it's just carry out. Um, if you'd like to sit out there, we'll carry out and you can sit out there and there's a trash can, you can dispose of it because it just creates too much confusion. We would like to be able to serve them. And when, what we do is we would roll out a cart that has our little hostess station with everything that we need, silverware and co uh, condiments and things, and we would actually hand them the menu, take their order, serve them their food and beverage, clean up after them, and dispose of it. And if we open the patio, or when we open the patio, I should say, we will have a host or hostess that will be you know, basically guarding the area to see who's seating where, how many people, and make sure that we have someone outside at all times. So I wanted to clarify that. We have extra people that are available. Um, so the way it works now, we normally have two serving members inside, because our cafe only seats 49 people inside. Um, but in order to have the outside, there would be a third person on staff, and and a hostess as well, or a host as well. So, which a lot of times ends up being my husband. <laughs> but we always have somebody assigned to the door to make sure that we are managing to see if anybody is out there. So that is what we're looking for. If we could have that permission granted so we could continue to serve fully from the inside, outside, in a controlled environment, that would be great. Hmm. The customers would be happy. Yes. No, I mean, I, I distinctly remember this uh, from from when we were asking for temporary for some reason i thought we had granted temporary use there was some conditions in there such as the signage and whatnot but that was a long time ago and and there were a lot of things that happened um, a fire change of landlord a few things that happened yeah. that interrupted that flow gotcha okay so um, we still have a couple of conditions and you had said something about land use gave you permission so they have not given me that yeah so i have a copy of it here and they and when i called them and said i actually need um like a full use and occupancy and they said there's already a use and occupancy for the farmer's market for that area right. so basically all we're doing is saying that helen's cafe is just using this area. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to ask the board to put that condition on, and I'll sure. talk to Lugum okay. tomorrow or Monday, and we can or, and and talk to you. Now, also this morning, I got a notice from the comptroller that asked to hold it until you call them. Oh, so, okay. Okay. So those are the two conditions, okay. and I'm sure that it seemed to me like that was something that could be cleared up very quickly. Yes, I think so. I think I know what that is. So, <laughs> so just. Comptroller, comptroller and Lugum. Um, I, I guess the only other uh, condition I would want to make is, uh, you know, you had, you had mentioned the signage, and I remember talking about that uh, before. But um, again, because you do have a very unique mm -hmm. situation, um, you know, where people can can pass through that. Again, just yeah. you know, have some some clear signage out there. Uh, yes, and we we already have them ready. We just right now it just says no alcohol out here at this time. Right. But it, it would be switched over to say no alcohol.
all beyond these points, Perfect. you know, all the way around the perimeter on all the way around. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. I had no further questions or comments. Mr. Richard, any questions? Mm -hmm. Barbara? I'm good. You're good? You have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to, to uh, uh, approve uh, Helen's Cafe, uh, Helen Euler, uh, for requesting the outdoor seating. Um, it'll be a 90-day conditional um, on uh, posted signage, um, land use, and uh, uh, comptroller approval. Okay. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. We have a first. We have a second. Any discussion? Unheard. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Good luck, Helen. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Let's call a vote for a vote here. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I'll send pictures of the signage once that's up. Yes. And then okay. I will yes. contact them as soon as I walk out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think I know what that's about, though. Somebody over there and also called a controller okay. okay and let me yeah, know yeah you all missed that <laughs> all right hon, thank you trying to get that record for the meeting right <laughs> we've we've heard this one several times <laughs> thank you I guess we'll stick with the premise changes. Willow's Restaurant uh, Recreation Center, um, Trisha, um, Trisha Post, request the outdoor seating. Please come forward. And Do you hereby declare and affirm that under the penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Excellent. Please state your name and address for the record. Trisha Post, 19507 North Snow Hill Manor Road, Lexington Park, Maryland, 20653. Excellent. Please have a seat. Present your application, please. Your request. We are looking to add outdoor seating on a front patio we have on our building and a grass area that's connected by a sidewalk. Okay. A grassy area. This entire 70 by 35 is grass. To the right of the door is concrete. To the left of the door is grass. Okay, so so most. Of, okay. Of the way you were holding it. The top is. <laughs> the way. So outside okay. the entry is concrete, and to when you're looking at the building to the left of it, going down that side is grass. Yes, ma'am. Okay. There's a sidewalk on either side of the grass area. Okay. It, do you have up any sort of fencing or anything like that, or? Not at the moment, and I probably have the horse before the cart because I have not gotten to LUG. Uh, Okay. Play and use and growth management. Yes, yeah, this will be conditional. She needs to put in permits and everything. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I mean, my my, my bigger concern is just, I mean, it, being that it's just an open grassy area and people just kind of aimlessly wandering around with you know their open beverages, et cetera. So, um, I, I, from where I guess where I'm sitting, I, I think I would be more comfortable to see something more permanent, more contained, and I understand there's a lot of permits and everything that will have to, to, to go with that, but um, I, I think I would want to see some, at least a plan for that, right? I mean, right now there's no, not even a plan, so it, it would be hard for from, my, from where, my, where I'm sitting to, to approve anything even conditionally um, when I don't even see a plan for, you know, for something. Um, so uh, I guess that that's kind of where I'm coming from is, you know, if you can love the idea, right? Um, but I think we need something a little bit more kind of contained and monitored and um, controlled. Oh, it would only be used during um, our larger events. Sure. And there would be someone out, yeah, there would be a 
customer service out there. My other, the other thing I wanted to cover, our handicap parking comes up, so my thought is to block that off completely because they walk to the sidewalk and come in. Yeah. And then, so there would be no cars going through the front of the building. Right. But on the concrete area, I don't know how I would block that off. Like, I, I don't think I'd be able to fence it. So I'm just looking for suggestions True. on what you guys would think on that. Well, and one of the things you just said was you, for some of your larger events, I mean, you can do, you, you know, we can certainly grant you temporary so, sorts of things like that. And then you can put up, um, you know, planters or, you know, concrete stanchions of some sort, right? To, to, that can be temporary, right? And we can approve those sort of temporary things for, for various events. Okay. Um, so that might be something that, that I would suggest as opposed to necessarily trying to do something more permanent. Um, I, I understand the advantage of the permanent is you're not having to come back to us every single time, right? But um, so for the events, it would be I would need to know six weeks out, six to eight weeks out to possibly you've got to get it, it yep, through because you may have to get a special event permit from Logum. Exactly. Okay. Let's, let's let's back up a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not our job here. To, to plan your business and draw. No, I I'm talking. I'm I, trying to. I'm trying to. I appreciate the insight. Yeah. So there are app, there are businesses that have temporary structures to define where a um, perimeter. the enclosure is the perimeter. We just discussed one, right? Which is um, you know meshing and stuff like that. So I think what we need though is some plan of what you want to use. Mm -hmm. And defined on the map what what you know and any entrances and, and and we can understand how people get in and out. Okay. I think that's what we need, but it doesn't have to be a permanent structure. It can be something that's about bollards and 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 ropes and people have used those things. Right. They just have to understand you can't go past that point. Yeah. The goal is to control the space. Correct. While you're having alcohol. So. And that's more of a conversation also to have with land use. Yeah, land use, yes. Thank you, Tammy. Okay. Yes, thank you. Any other questions or anything you want to, you have any questions for us? No, I will get back on the schedule once I've had a conversation with them. Okay. So at this point, are you withdrawing your application? No, can I extend for? You would want to withdraw it for now. You can come back only because they can't make a motion or do any action on it. So I just have this application. Can we just table it until next month? Or make a motion to table. disapprove? Or how does well, that work? You're, 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 asking you her, you're asking her for more information. Oh, okay. You're asking her for new plans and everything anyway. So I think it would just be okay. easier just to do a new application. Yeah. Okay. And it's not going to be any more work than, okay. okay. That would be the better way to go. Because if you disapprove it, she can't apply for six months. Okay. Mm. All right. All right. We so don't want I'm to withdrawing. Withdrawing and reapplying. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Thanks, Trish. Good luck. Okay. All right. Um, Next on the list, we're we going. Do, we do have, um, we can do, because the other two are administrative, we do have uh, Bailey's catering here. Okay. You want to do Bailey's next? I would do them so they can. Exit. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go back to old business. Bailey Catering, um, Donna um, Mattingly, William Bailey Jr., and uh, is it Jacqueline Buckler? requesting 90 day extension of conditional approval. Correct. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Excellent. Please state your name and address for the record. Jacqueline Bailey Buckler, 36805 Foster's Neck Farm, Bushwood, Maryland. Donna Mattingly, 21791 White Snack Road, Bushwood, Maryland. Excellent. Please have a seat. <coughs> and Good. Mr. Bailey is out of town? Yes. Okay. Do, I don't have a letter from him. Um, um, oh, she said she sent you one. Maybe emailed you one? Bill sent me one? No, my daughter did. Oh, it would have to be from Bill, though. Okay. I don't know if he signed or what, what the deal was. I mean, it's a... 
It's an extension, requesting an extension. extension. I don't know if. And actually, we should be moving right along here in the next week or I two. I hope so. Uh, you know more than I do. No more it's than a I big do. File. <laughs> so when does their their current approval expire? It expires uh, within. Well, it. it they're on the. They're on this meeting because it's about to expire. Yeah, they're right. So I mean, I, I, but. Okay. Right. So the the risk certainly the risk is if we don't approve something and it expires, and then they start. would have to stop uh, before they came back. Um, but how confident? I guess you're probably not extremely confident. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. But you you, you seem to be confident just a minute ago that yes, you were about to wrap things I'm up. I'm pretty in confident. Great. So, <laughs> but not totally. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a light. Yeah. Bigger yeah. light this time. <laughs> cool. I just handed in our third. Um, checking account thing and that's the final so she wants to meet with us next week and I think that's it okay I, I was just trying to figure out I mean what is the likelihood that, that, that this will get done without the extension it's, in it it's in an estate it's it's the they're the heirs to the estate so right. it's been going through that Nightmare. probate <laughs> process God help you. It's time. Right. Nothing's easy. No. no. I'm just concerned without, you know, without the letter from Mr. Bailey, right? Did that put us in a bind? Did, did you guys think that Mr. Bailey sent a letter giving you authority to speak on his behalf? I was told today. Okay, then I may not have, it may be on my email and I haven't received, yeah. you know, I wasn't in there. But, it's, but it is your, it's your testimony you've been sworn in. It's your testimony that that letter has been provided to give you authority to speak on his behalf. Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I can't. Uh, you know. Did you call They it? say a letter's been sent, so. I, I yeah. talked to Sarah on my way over, and she said that she sent the letter, so I don't know if he signed the letter. I don't know anything about the letter, but well, can I we said say, Bill's not here. Well, can we say in contingent on that, that being verified, we can say move on, move forward with it? That uh, we do. They're maintaining so that he's. They have. They have their. That his. They have his consent to yeah. speak on his behalf. So. Okay. And yeah. can he be called? Yes. Is that a, is that an option we have? Uh, we can corroborate know. his voice. <laughs> That's a that distinct like voice. Because it's going to start off with, <laughs> by God. Bill's voice. <laughs> I'm going to say, by God, I gave Donna permission. <laughs> Again, they're giving, they're, they're under, they're under oath. They've, they've said that they've got. Yeah, so I think. And, and just to answer your question, technically, the expert, the um, original application expires tomorrow. Oh, All so right. they, oh, they, 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 so they definitely need this. They need yeah. the extension. Well, we need gotcha. an extension. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. Otherwise, Mr. Chairman. Okay. No I questions. Like, I like no to hear Bill on the phone anyway. Do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, to approve uh, the 90 day extension uh, request uh, to Bailey's Catering, Donna Mattingly, William Buck Bailey Jr. and Jacqueline Buckler. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Um, I'll second that. Do we have a second? Any discussion? No, sir. We'll vote this time. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, ladies. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. Oh, Barbara. Board Administrator Report. No, we're going to go back to... Yes, your, your... Officer oh. Member Trade Name Yes. Changes. Officer Member Trade Name Changes. It's confusing when we're bouncing all over this agenda. <laughs> North End Gallery, officer change, removing um, Betty. Betty. Betty uh, is it Betty? Yep, mm -hmm. she pronounces it Betty. Okay, Bo Betty Boomgardner um, and adding Ju uh, Judy D. Larson. <laughs> all in favor? Need a, you need a motion. A motion? Yes. I guess we need a motion. I'll Could make a motion to uh, approve the uh, name change for North End Trading Gallery uh, officers removing Betty Bumgardner and adding Judy D. Larson. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a first, second. Any discussion? No, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Personalized Touch Catering, LLC, trading as the White Rose. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a. So we'll are they changing, we'll they're changing white. the name, right? From it's touching. Well, no. It, no, they're. That's her corporate name. They're they're adopting a trade name. They have a trade name. Oh, okay. 
So, so the, L the, LL the LLC, the entity name stays the same. They're just going to be using okay. the white rose. Right. They're for, trading. Right. That'll be the name on the sign. Okay. Right? So I'll make a motion for personalized touching catering LLC to trade name as white the white white rose. Correct. Yeah. I'll second that motion. First, second. Any discussion? Yeah, just uh, my only discussion is for, for again, clarity because of the similarity, if you will. It, I mean, we had the, the one that was actually, but they were actually changing ownership because of the entity was changing, correct? It was changing from a non-LLC to an LLC, right. whereas this is just adding the trade name to the existing LLC. Because right. right. some, right. some people trade under their corporate name. Right. Um, with caterers, it's a little different. Okay. You know, they, they usually name a room, the catering room. It's a tradition to name the room. This is all I'm learning this year, right? Um, and so I had to work with Patty to, if you're going to have that on the marquee, if you're going to have that in your advertising, then it has to be your trade name. And she did her own research, and she's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so she did. She got her trade, trade name. But, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know. Okay. McKay's and Grocery is Fairland Market Incorporated. But that is actually a, that is a legal filing with with the uh, with the state of Maryland as a trade name. Sure. I, yeah, I'm familiar with the, the, the trade names being you know, part of that legal filing. Um, and, but that was just kind of my my I guess my point of clarity and kind of asking for that that point of clarity, you know, for my own edification, right? On that distinction between you know, when somebody has to actually present a whole new application to, to transfer that licensure versus just, right. hey, I'm, I'm adding a trade name to my existing business, so. Right. But, and so it basically just comes down to the entity that is holding the license. Or a percentage of ownership change. If a majority right. of percentage of ownership, even like in a corporation, if fifth, our, our uh, rules say that if 50% or more is changing hands, it has to be a cha transfer. Right. They can keep the entity. We've had people purchase the entire entity. Sure. But if 50% or more of the ownership is changing hands, they that do have to do to, a transfer. Right. Yep. right. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Is, no is DBA same as the trader's name? Right, same That's name. correct. Yeah. It's the same, yeah. same type of language. So now I'm lost. Have we voted on this yet? We, yeah. we, have, <laughs> we have. We have not voted. We have not voted. Motion, motion. and we seconded. Okay. Motions yeah. were That's made. That's what I'll make sure. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the discussion phase. <laughs> okay. Do so we have a motion? We have a second. second. We've had discussion. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Fire away. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Yay, no violations. <laughs> right? It's our favorite part. Don't worry, we won't. That was short lived. <laughs> was short -lived. Next month, so we'll uh -oh. make up one. But evidently, it's working. Okay. It's working. Good. Board Administrator Report. Tammy? Um, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> All's well. How good. about that? All's well. Nice. All's well. Uh, having a few hiccups with um, up the road with the changes, um, new employees. So you saw quite a few bulk transfers. Um, I'll be having a talk with the people up the road who handle this because if our people are going to have to have these kind of, you, normally when they come before you, those agency approvals have been met, okay? Normally it's, you come in, deadline is April, your hearing is in May. But we've had a lot of conditional approvals and now if the bulk transfer is gonna take longer than two to three weeks to issue, I may start saying if you come in April, you may have your hearing in June because it's not fair to these people. Uh, ABC, for example, now has to rearrange settlement closing, has to call lawyers, realtors, the bank, et cetera. This is a big deal. And uh, I had a little email exchange with the folks up the road to say, do you realize what you're doing here? Um, so I'll take care of that. That's the only hiccups that we're having at the office. Um, RAS trainings are going great. and. Uh, getting good response. So we'll be filling them up again. We've been, we've had full classes. Um, but other than that, all's well. Okay. When is your next class, Tammy? 
So I'll just ask you since you're here. 20, it's the end of the month. The end of the month, I can't remember the date. But. It's the last Tuesday or Wednesday of the month and I can't remember okay. the date either. I'll call the office. I'm gonna try to attend that one okay. if I can. 24th is um, a Wednesday, so Wednesday. the 22nd would be a Tuesday. Kids go back to school on the 24th. That's I think it's the week. I think it's the week <laughs> after. I think it's the week after. It's the last Tuesday or Wednesday of the month. It'll be 30th. Maybe 30th, 30th or then. 31st. Yeah. Okay. I think it's the. Oh shoot! I don't know. It's, it's okay. one of I'll those two. I'll call you. Any other questions? Chris, that's just right around the corner. <laughs> don't even go there. <laughs> that's that <laughs> My phone is falling up. Not heard. Okay, we'll move on to Deputy Myers. Good afternoon. Uh, for the month of July, uh, we visited uh, seven locations for the covert assignment, of which we had uh, three failures and four pass. Uh, in addition to the covert assignments, um, I did a, um, five additional checks countywide for the sh shoulder tap enforcement. And that's like, you know, kids trying to uh, get an adult to go inside a liquor store and buy them stuff. So within the prominent area of what is listed, uh, didn't see any violations at that time. Oh, and also it's coupled with you know, consumption in the parking lot, so didn't have any violations there either. Um, as far as uh, DUI arrests, the Sheriff's Office had nine DUI arrests, the State Police had nine. So somewhere along the line, something's going right. I mean, nine is still too much, but um, usually those numbers are in the 20s. And uh, I don't know if people are just being more responsible because during the months of June and July, there's a lot of enforcement activity with consideration to DUI patrols. So um, not downplaying the not number nine, but it is a lower number than we usually see. So something must be on the positive uptick. Stationary surveillance, I conducted four of them, spent 45 minutes at each place. Um, do you have this? Okay. I just don't want to say the locations just in case I want to visit them again. Uh, as far as postings, didn't have any alcohol postings nor summonses because we didn't have any violations in June. Public parks, I usually go to the same public parks, but this time I included Elms Beach, which was fine. Um, no violations there, a lot of people. And as far as training or meetings, uh, the CAC and the Community Alcohol Coalition meeting and the RAS, I attended uh, with Kevin and uh, Tammy. And that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Okay. Move on to the, uh, all the Beverage Association, the ones here today. Alcohol Coalition. So we continue to meet and at the uh, last meeting we uh, settled that we're going to uh, be able to continue the red and green cards. So that will be uh, still in place. Um, other than that, I don't think there was anything else spectacular. Okay. Any questions? Well, we were going to have, we're going to, well, we are going to have an ad hoc committee to um, look at the the penalties that we're issuing and trying to come up with um, maybe updating the old matrix. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to have some input from you, from from CAC, where we want the, um, the Alcohol Beverage Association to be able to be part of that. And I've appointed um, Richard Watts to be our chair for that ad hoc committee and Richard Chen will be the vice chair of it. And we'd like to have a good discussion about this and see what the industry thinks is appropriate, what you think is appropriate deterrence. Mm -hmm. And um, 
then they'll come back to us and, and make a recommendation and hopefully present us with a, a new matrix that maybe we can vote on and have a discussion about. If you'd be if you'd be willing to participate, I would be very grateful. Yes, and definitely appreciate that. Uh, yes, um, great opportunity. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And Chris, you have you have access to our rules and regs, but I can send you a copy of what the current penalty matrix is if okay. you don't have it on hand. So just okay, it. great. Right. Thank you. Good. Have anything can else for us? Can I speak? Yes. And in relation to uh, the uh, individual that runs the uh, green card, red card, mm -hmm. I did speak with him. Uh, I think you kind of did a Correct. Yeah, email he, meet. He wanted an uh, introduction and to you. He just wanted to talk with me in reference to that, uh, what my opinion was to enhance their performance or for them to enhance our knowledge of what they do. Right now, it's all anonymous, uh, that we just know that certain people get green cards, certain people get red cards. But if we wanted to act on the specifics of you know, who gets the red cards, he, it, there's nothing in the law that says he can't, and so he will work with us um, with that respect, if we want that information. So just different things, if the Alcohol Beverage Board wanted to um, kind of have a, a summary type report for them, they would add that to their overall report status for the CAC if, if needed. So he's willing to negotiate a lot of things now and it was a good talk, so I okay. just wanted to pass that on. That should be useful. Do you guys do restaurants? Yes. Okay. Totally. Seems that restaurants are a problem right now. Just a tad. No. It, it just takes a while, you know. I yep. mean, people, I guess, become complacent a little bit. And um, until uh, you're affected by um, a violation, you know, and it's just not that we're the, the monster in the shadows. Uh, we, we do give, you know, we are empathetic to their needs is what I'm getting at because some people do make mistakes, but at the same time, you know, certain protocols apply, at least for my standards, uh, saying the law doesn't require certain things, but my protocol would. And so um, I, I would like to get out there and talk more to educate you know, uh, so there is no problems. There is no, um, you know, entity that is in the gray zone. You know, you either check or you don't. You either verify or corroborate that date of birth or you don't, period. No matter what the, the young person says to you. Right. Because what do we know? Our kids, when they were of that age, um, tell you everything in the world to get what they want. You know, they still do. And uh, so if, if, you know, that certain cadet that I send in there doesn't have an ID and this says, well, I don't have it with me, well, what are you supposed to do as the server? Well, I'm sorry, I can't serve you. Or do you have it? Go get it and we'll see from there. You know, but basically you're not going to have a sale at that point right. unless you cooperate that individual's age, period. <coughs> you know, so, and... Uh, I guess since this is on YouTube, I'd like to say when we do have a violation and we do, I do constructive criticism with them, you know, like you should have done this, you should have done that. And of course, that might be emotional for that person. And uh, unfortunately, patrons get to see that and they think we're the big bad wolf, but we're not. We're trying to prevent, you know, loss of life. You know, if that sale would have gone through, how many times would you have served that person? Would you have? But they become intoxicated and drive and hurt somebody or themselves, you know. So we're on the side of uh, what is right, what is proper, and what a reasonable and prudent person would think at that time, not because she or he was caught not asking for ID and now they're emotional about it because their whole life flashes in front of them with the job and things of that nature. So I just want everybody to know that we're on the side of saving lives, you know? That's basically it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, that's all for me. Excellent, thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for being here. And I'm sorry I ruined your 
almost historic time of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Board members, anything? Um, so with the uh, with the additional committee, uh, did you have a timeline for that would be determined by the oh, a timeline? But when you, when you wanted it completed by when when would you like to have something done to I was going to propose that. Okay. Like to do that the sooner the better. Sure. Uh, no, I agree that's yeah. the sooner, but didn't know if you had something. Let's in look mind. at let's look at ninety days. Okay. Is that more than enough? I was thinking yeah. more like nine, day, nine days. Well, you could have that meeting, but then you're going to have to produce. But you may ha need multiple meetings. I was going to say, yeah. I don't think oh, we'll get okay. it all done in one. Yeah. Well, I, I would like it to. It can go faster. Yeah. I'm just saying that I'm asking to have Be a finished product before the board, a document. No more than 90 days. No, yeah. no more than 90 days. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. And of course, our office is open for accommodations. I had explained okay. that our. Whoever, um, I don't know what Chris's schedule is, but I'm thinking Monday or Tuesdays after at, after five o'clock is fine, but Monday or Tuesdays are best for the licensees. I don't know who the community, I mean, the Licensed Beverage Association is gonna have to represent. They still haven't, they've been notified, but they haven't given me a name yet. Okay. Um, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, obviously are not good days for them because business is very busy. Okay. So exchange, exchange, Telephone information, yep. and that when you arrange a meeting and all that, that's up to you, Mr. Chairman. Roger. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Will we be able to have any uh, either legal counsel there during the meeting, or um, or just kind of show you what we've come up with afterwards? Obviously, if we're we're coming up with a new potentially new matrix, right? It, I'm certain there's other per, you know laws out there beyond maybe even what the rules and regulations are. I just want to make sure that anything that we suggest doesn't somehow inadvertently violate something else that, that this board is not authorized to even do. Right? It's in here. Well, as long I, as I stick within that, we're good. Well, I just, I, I did email you guys some history on how those were right. created and what it was was the, uh, the representatives of the Community Alcohol Coalition, because they chaired it sure. the last time, they would report to the board at every meeting. So I don't know if, I mean, it's up to the chair how he wants to do that, but if you would be reporting to the board ultimately, so. Sure, sure. And I, I think, you know, if you have questions, legal questions, when, as you're going through the process or the committee has legal questions, they can just Quite. shoot them, you know, shoot those questions over to me. I'm happy to, so happy so. to answer them. Yeah, no, hopefully, I mean, my, my goal would be, you know, before we bring it to the board, that it's a suitcase thing, right? That everybody's in agreement, we sure. checked all the boxes, it's, you know, sure. fits all the legal legalities and, you know, everybody's on board with it. And then that way it's just, we present it to the board um, and it's a, it's a you know, slam dunk. board would vote as Correct. you always do. Right, yep. Okay. Excellent, that was all my question. Good. Yes, sir. Okay. We good. Once you gentlemen yeah. make a, a date, you just let me know and I'll, Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, at least try to have a meeting before the end of this month, for at least the first meeting, that would be nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My fall usually gets pretty crazy, so uh, the sooner the better I'm, I'm on board with. Uh, the other topic, switching gears, I'd like to just throw out there. Uh, I noticed, you know, we have lots of revisiting the, the extension you know, due to whatever taking as you mentioned, is there a requirement? What requires them to come back here? Is there like something, for example, they can just submit that and-, it, and Well, that's and why you give them 90 days. The so 90 days is up. Just 90 days, they're submitting all the conditions to me, right. not having to come back. That's why I tend to, I tend to tell them, go for the 90 days because I have had people thinking, I'm gonna get it done in 30, uh, it'll be done next week. Yeah. Well, next week, the person they deal with at whatever agency just went on vacation or had a baby. Yeah. So now it's bumped. I mean, it happens, right? So mm -hmm. they do submit all of that stuff to me. The thing is, they come back to you when one of those items they could not get through. Right. So for whatever reason. But it just seems like it happens more frequently than not. Well, you guys came in <laughs> during COVID yeah. and everything is all backed up. Yeah, it right, never right. was like right. this. They're always waiting on the in other entities like land use and growth management, the health department. Yeah. And so that's a slowed process because it's backlogged. Right. right. And so they're not getting it. So therefore they have to do the 90 day extensions continuously. Right. right. So, so the, my point, Point being, if if it's being delays being caused by 
other government authorities, for example, why do we need to require them to show up again, or could we could they just request that through you paperwork? You can't. Problem? You well, to extend after ninety days. Yeah, just like just like the one that we ones we right. that weren't here for the. Uh, well, you've, when you approved it, yeah. this board approves it at 90 days. Right. Okay. If they don't get it done by 90 days, they have to, come back. They have to ask your permission for more time. Right. No, I understand it. But can right. they ask the permission for Say more like time in without showing up here no. through? No, no. I like can't. on the first 90 days, ask for another Maybe 90 days? I'm looking for efficiencies for all of us. Understood. Right? But it has to be, you can't, like, you couldn't do an email with each other because right. it's all violation of open meetings. They need to have an open meetings. They need to come back and present before you. And if you have a discussion with regard to that application it has to be open it has to be to open to the public in an open forum so so we had one because on the agenda. because you may you may have you may maybe one of the members decides they don't want to extend it has happened so okay, okay so Let, how about okay maybe 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 let me articulate what i'm trying to say so we had a we had an agenda today where a couple items one was about um Doing business as, for example, trading, trading, and minor things like that. Right? Mm -hmm. I know that's not ninety day thing, but why couldn't they submit? Because, for example, health department didn't approve. That's the last ticket that they're looking for. And they, and, and why couldn't they just submit? Look, due to this final thing, submit it to the board. But they don't have to be present. We can consider that. Because without you need their to why. You well, need I to mean, know. it would be listed in their yeah. application. Understood, right. understood, but, okay, land use. Okay, well, land use is holding it up, and this is what they're saying, but many times this board has questioned that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you, Mr. Watts specifically had questioned somebody as to, mm -hmm. well, why exactly is this being held up? Have you actually done anything with the permit? Mm -hmm. Have you moved forward? Mm -hmm. And it was then discovered in the meeting that no, they hadn't, and that was. And why. if you reject it, then they start over from scratch. It's dead. Right. They've just lost their 90-day conditional. Now, my my question, not that I have a dog in this fight, but um, like the 90-day extension, you know, temporary 90-day extension, and um, within that, you say you must complete this, 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 and this, right? And if they do that and give it to Tammy and everything looks well, then that they don't have to come back. But the, the lady that is off of Bradley Boulevard um, had requested that uh, outdoor extension and the questions were asked, uh, hey, how are you gonna uh, cordon off the area? And she verbally explained it, but could, could she not have just continued on and said, if I get you a uh, to scale diagram of it and, and put it with Tammy, then that would be good because she's explaining it and the Bradley Boulevard building is isolated and what she, you know, the grass is here, the semen is here. I mean, that doesn't change. So, but I she was just, hasn't even gone to plant land uh, she, and she should have. Okay. She should, she had plenty of time to do that. Because I just definitely. remember way back in the day we had where they verbalized that they were going to put plant planters out, but it wasn't drawn out so to scale. Well, I know, I know since I've been on the board, I always require them to either follow up with a new drawing to submit. Or they, right. have, to, or they have to submit it to Tammy. Absolutely. Yes. But that's what I was getting at. Uh, could it not have happened? Because they still would have to submit it to Tammy for now. The problem with that is what you're saying is, because uh, then where do you draw the line? You, you can submit something and, right. and explain, I, I just hear just me said, out. There's, it becomes so amorphous, right? So yeah. how can the board ask questions about something that's so amorphous and kind of out there? You know what I mean? So it's difficult, and I think um, Member Watts pointed this out. I, I can't, how can I ask questions about your application if, I, you, if you don't even really know what, it, what right. you're presenting? So that's why it's so important for, the, you know, the licensees that come in here with an application that lays it out nice, it succinctly pr provides a plan yeah. demonstrating what it is they're actually seeking. Gotcha. So to be able to ask questions about it, where where is the entrance and egress, the points of entrance and egress, where, you know, uh, where are the structures that, that protect those areas or designate those areas? I mean, that's why those that's important. And I appreciate what you're saying, the expediency as aspect of it, but you don't want to sacrifice you know, quality, safety for the sake of expediency. And to address um, Member Shen's questions about, about again, expediency and, and presentation, ultimately, 
decisions need to be made by the board. They can't be made outside of this public forum, number one. Number two, um, by, your, by your train of thought or logic, you could pretty much say that about every application, right? They could all be just put in uh, virtually and, and then this board would really not have a reason to exist. So you have to, they have, the reason they have to come before the board is because the board has the right to ask questions. They, they, they come here, they're sworn in, they give sworn testimony as to their application. Um, there's a record of what's happening and the board has a record of its decision-making process. That's why it's done that way. And the public has the right to, to be at hearings and object. Absolutely right. That's the whole purpose of the Open I, Meetings Act. I, I mean, I get all that. I mean, no, I'm not saying anything at all about certain things that needs yeah, to be done right. Sure. But, you know, when you look at a spectrum, there's always I mean, my, I, I've been a business owner myself. There's certainly plenty of red tapes to go around, and I'm just trying to find a way to do the right thing, but at the same time find a right balance between doing that and also to cut out, bring some efficiency in it, not to bring people back all the time, if, if not necessary. There, I, I think that uh, particular case was a little different. The other ones are, it seems like it was extension due to other control beyond their sure. control, and it, it's. Um, uh, I mean, anyway. the one way to prevent somebody from yeah. having to come back is they could just not ever present their application until all that stuff's done, right? Um, and that's then there's true. No contingencies yeah. at all, right? Which makes it easy. But you know, we 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 do that to try to allow them to have some efficiencies and, and be able to start operating, you know, while they are awaiting some of those things. Well, so. and also there's a balance there because a lot of them. Yeah. If they can't get the alcohol out there, they're not going to put the effort into making these, sure. either getting a new license or adding an outdoor seating because it wouldn't be uh -huh. worth their while. Right, Master Jim. Now, there are some things that are that are done that are not done by us, correct? Such I, as? As I did sign some paperwork that you can sign my name to certain things, right? All you, all I, I sign your name, I, I stamp, I have your rubber stamp for summonses and payroll right yep. so i'm just saying that it's not a, we in, in the one day events they they oh, the one day what, license what, that's what y'all sign that's the one y'all signs the one so, day license. so there's some if i'm, I'm going to try to get that there yep. are some efficiencies that are built into this correct correct that, and and as far as like the officer member change trade name changes those are completely administrative there's no change in the business there's no change in the structure it's a change in their corporate paperwork perhaps or their DBA that we have to by law update their file so you have to approve it I don't have the authority to do that and that's why they don't appear there was a time they had to appear and the board did go through and say yeah this isn't really necessary because it's not something that the public it's going to affect the public in any way you know so maybe the only thing I'm proposing here nothing specific but maybe as we continue to do this if there are some processes that could be improved, then you know we should think about that. Some things possibly outside the box. And you also have to realize some of these processes are dictated by the state, not by us. You know, it comes down, Unders it yeah. filters yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and we've also, I think, Dave, you were on the board when we did this. We kept asking them what was happening. Nothing was happening. Happening. So we, you turned it down after so long. It was the case in Charlotte Hall. And oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Nothing had happened for so long, and they kept coming back every 90 days. And progress. Or, and no progress was made, so we actually took away the application from them. But previous boards made the 90 day max condition for something that other than a new structure, a new building like. Well, new structure, they, they were coming in every six months or whatever it was, but even so, they had come before us like four times and nothing had been done. Right. Yep. I and I guess you get the answer of why Lugum is holding it or whatever from the person. This is what Lugum yeah. told me, so you guys have that knowledge now. Yeah. Yeah. And I usually also will get little bit of information from Logan, but I don't, you know, it's it's on them. You know, when they come in with any of the applications that they have to appear, they come in by deadline day, which is about three to four weeks prior to this meeting, and they are told. They hear me tell them. <laughs> you know, I sound like a broken record. Okay, you got to get Logan, you got to get the health. You gotta, I mean, a lot of times they'll come in and it's just the idea. I had somebody come in yesterday 
wanting to open a business, did not have an entity form to nothing. I did not give him an application. I gave him a rules and a regs, and I gave him the instructions on how to get a liquor license. And I said, you first need to set up your entity. That's game one. And, and if you're looking at particular properties, probably want to talk to some of the other agencies as to whether that property will work. We have plenty of properties that would not pass as a restaurant because they don't have the septic capacity right. for that. Yeah. Okay? So that's, but that's not our, that's not in our wheelhouse. Yeah. That's somebody else. So, so we do, you know, but a lot of times they come in and they're just testing the water, but they want to get that piece of paper in there. So no matter what I tell them, you know? It's like, I know I told you this. There's a checklist. You know? And it just is what it is. And, and, you know. um, so we try to have them as prepared as possible when they show up. But I don't have control over what they do when they leave my office. And it's a good, what you were saying the other day um, when we were on the phone was that, you know, we don't license tables. No. We, we license amount of square footage you're saying that you could have an extension of premise outside we're not saying that you can have 20 tables or 30 tables or 40 tables we're just looking at the site plan and this is this is where you could do it it's it's the other entities in the government that are going to say you can't only have so many tables in this we're actually not the the, the long stick in the in the game we're the olive in the martini yeah. <laughs> now, Kevin and I just went, were requested to come do a site visit because there is a, a business that's looking to get outside seating. And they also want us to look at their operation for some other stuff so we could, you know, just kind of make suggestions or, or they could ping their ideas off on us, whether it's legal or not, by that little pink book, right? And um, they asked about some outdoor seating. Um, and we can't really tell them Oh, your fence, yeah, put a, put a brick blockade, right. you know, build Normandy between you and the road. Right. We can't tell them that because State Highway, I mean, what we told them was you need to go to Lugham, find out who you need to talk to in State Highway if that's even allowed. You may, it may not be, it may sound like a good idea, but State Highway may have other, I, you know, that's their world. So you get that here too, you know, even Miss um, Post with her outdoor area and the parking area, if she's got handicapped spots there, there may be laws that dictate, ADA laws that dictate whether or not she can have a fence or not. I mean, you know, there's a lot of hoops, there are a lot of hoops they have to jump through. It's a dance, it's, a, it's an orchestration of everything, trying to get it all together and um, I think we have a lot of sympathy in our office. I think this board does too. I've been on the other side. I know you have. <laughs> yeah, I've been on the other side. Yeah. So. So I'm very fully aware of it. Believe and, me. And I tell you, there. Well. Believe me when I tell you about <laughs> the conversation I have to have up the road. I got a little New York on the person I was talking to. <laughs> and mostly with the, do you understand that you are holding up settlement dates, that you, you are costing these people money yeah. by letting things sit on your desk? And it was okay. basically the conversation I had. Yeah. So, And the lawyer's fee. And the lawyer's fee. <laughs> That's important. Everybody loves the lawyer's fee. <laughs> Lawyers always make money. So, you know, I mean, we... The good ones do. <laughs> I think in our office most of the time, even, even, you know, Sergeant Myers, Deputy Myers, who everybody looks at the big bad or when Kevin goes in, oh God, it's the inspector, you know. Um, I think once they get to sit with us and talk with us, they realize that we're actually in their corner. As long as their corner is good and right with the law, you know, they come into me and I'm like, tell me what you want for Christmas and we'll see what fits within the confines of the law. Speaking of the inspector, I would actually like to hear the inspector's report. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we, I'm sorry, bouncing around the agenda all over. <laughs> Chris is on a roll today. <laughs> uh, since the last meeting, we did 17 inspections, uh, three or four follow-ups. Like I say, Tammy and I met with the business. I also met with another one, and I think they're going to send all of their bouncers, bartenders, and staff to a RAS class. Just, I think we're probably going to do one just for them. Um, 
I sent out emails the other day when we had the RAS class meeting, somebody asked about gambling, football pools and stuff. So I sent out a text message to the bars and restaurants that about with what they can and can't do. And like I said, the mailer meeting, we've had that. And so that's pretty much what we did this month. And, and so far, no bricks through the window. Had, had a few, had a few calls about back from the text, but they were just confirming what I was sent them. So. Thank you. My apologies. <laughs> I had them checked off. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I blink and things happen. You know. No respect. It's just yeah. bouncing all over. Well, I normally I ignore them. Yeah, you normally <laughs> bounce them. <laughs> I think you're good now. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. a motion to, adjourn. to adjourn this. Um, That's two of us. This 11th, 2022 meeting. She said, Do we have a motion to adjourn? We have a second. second. We have a third. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, that's it. She, uh,